Cape Town is known as the mother city, and it's here where South Africa's first internet billionaire Mark Shuttleworth made headlines when he sold his company Thought Consulting for a record three and a half billion rand. Most people are familiar with that story, but did you know that open source played a large role in his success? The US had a bunch of laws which tried to regulate how cryptography could be used by American companies doing business internationally. And I thought that would present an opportunity to do an end run around that and provide cryptographic services and software to people globally um, where Netscape and Microsoft and IBM couldn't compete because of really silly laws in America. And because I'd become familiar with open source software, I knew that the tools, the web server tools are available and I knew that the cryptography tools are available. It was just a matter of putting those two together. It was a way of starting to meet the engineers who did the, um, the, the cryptographic work for Netscape and for Microsoft. And that then provided an entry into the certificate business, which is another aspect of the same industry. What exactly is a digital certificate? A digital certificate is a way of making sure that you know who you're actually talking with when you encrypt communications. Um, basically what you do is you, you, you both agree to trust some third party and that third party issues a passport to, to, to you and I and, uh, and then we can communicate using those passports. And the third party is not involved in the communication. So when we set up Thought, we weren't actually brokering all of the transactions that happen online. We were simply saying, this is Amazon.com. And then you could connect securely to Amazon.com and know that you could give them your credit card details and so on. So a large part of the business is the reputation that the issuing authority has. Many businesses in the States never even really thought to step up and try to get into that industry because they thought it would be dominated by the Ernst & Youngs and the, um, the IBMs, people with a strong established technology or trust relationships and reputations. But the reality was the business was so small and the, the potential risk so high, none of those guys wanted to do it. And so there really was a, a sort of counterintuitive opportunity for a little guy to climb in. Initially operating from his parents' garage, Mark grew his company first into a converted house and then into custom-built offices. It was a time when the internet was expanding and e-commerce was taking off. One of their main competitors, VeriSign, was a key player in the corporate end of the market. What started to happen was that first the internet was starting to take off outside of the US and so there was more growth outside of the US and also it was starting to become clear that small businesses were a bigger market than large businesses for these digital certificates and so they figured it would be easier to acquire an, a, a player that already had a stake in those sectors than to try and change their business model accordingly. After lengthy negotiations, Mark accepted an offer totaling $575 million or 3.5 billion rands. A few months later, the internet bubble burst and stock markets swayed as tech companies started losing profits. But an interesting observation on the whole bubble bursting. Um, if you look at the number of certificates sold, which is really directly correlated to the number of businesses running on the internet, that number has continued to grow. So even though um, Wall Street and the NASDAQ um, got flattened because people realized that the internet is you know, just like any other business environment. Having said that, it's still an incredibly vibrant and dynamic place to do business and there are more and more businesses starting up, more and more devices connected, more and more people connected. So while the, the bubbles burst, the revolution has con continued. So, with a fortune at his disposal, what was his next frontier? Space. Like many young boys, Mark had always dreamed of flying to space. When American millionaire Dennis Tito bought a seat in the Soyuz for $20 million, Mark decided to follow suit. But he didn't want to be a mere passenger. When he finally took off on the 25th of April 2002, he took along with him projects on stem cell research, HIV and human physiology. This is where the stem cell and embryology experiment is uh, currently housed. Space, the final frontier. Or is it cyberspace? Mark is pioneering new opportunities in the world of open source in South Africa and beyond. He recently launched Ubuntu Linux, a full operating system and software package on one CD that is available free of charge. I've made a commitment that the software will always remain absolutely free. So it's an interesting experiment. On the one hand, I'm putting resources back into the open source community, and I feel good about that. If Ubuntu doesn't become sustainable, at least I feel like I've, I've, I've helped accelerate and, and inject money back into a community that really empowered me to, to build thought. 
Um, but if we can build services around that software that pay the salaries of the people who produce the software, then that will make me feel even better because I can go on to other projects and, and that I know will then continue to grow and continue to thrive.